Do you want to try using for Webmin for something in your smart home? Are you looking for a DHCP server that's a little more flexible than what you're using? Well, stay tuned. I'm going to show you how to set up DHCP on Webmin. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to set up a DHCP server on Webmin on your RPI. Now say that fast three times. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and we're going to be working on this together. This content is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithronnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links available in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you want to get notified when new content is uploaded, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. Here's what we're going to be dealing with in this video, and that's getting DHCP set up on Webmin. We're going to talk about the required items, then we'll talk about getting DHCP up and installed on Webmin, and then we'll get into the configuration. Trust me, you've got this. Not that hard once you've seen how to walk through it. In terms of the required items to get this up and running, I'm going to assume that you've already got Webmin installed on a Raspberry Pi. If you want to try on something other than Raspberry Pi, that's fine. But I've got directions right up here or here, depending on where I get this place, that will take you to the first video where we got this up and running on a Raspberry Pi. Trust me, very straightforward. And I think you'll be very surprised at how easy it's going to be. Then we'll need to get DHCP solved. Technically, you'll hear a term called DHCPD or DHCP daemon. That's the part we'll get stalled, and then we'll do some configuration, and then you'll be ready to go. And you're going to ask, well, why do I want to do this? Well, there's a very good reason. Since some of us change internet routers quite frequently, this way will give you a stable system to have at home, or if you've got a small business, you also will have a lot more configuration items to deal with. So that if you need to do something special because you get voice over IP phones and they need a TFTP server to talk to, that's the kind of thing you can set up within DHCP. There are other things that you can do. You can actually run dual DHCP servers. Now, what you'll want to do in that case is the, the range or subnet you set up, say it's 10.0.1.0/24, or another way to look at it is 10.0.1.0 with a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. You can not really share that between DHCP servers, but you can split the range so that you don't get duplication of assignment of IP addresses. So what you would do is do a subnet mask of 255.255.255.128. That's going to split the range in half, and that way you give each server half of the range, or you simply, depending on the amount of configuration you can do on your DHCP server, you can sit there and restrict it. Now that, that's getting into somewhat of advanced stuff. So there are ways to do it. It's just a matter of how you want to go about doing it. So now that we got the groundwork laid to where we need to go, now we can go ahead and get DHCP installed on Webmin. Well, I've already got Webmin console up and running, as you can see. So what we'll do is we'll click on search. There's other ways to do it, but this is, again, this is just one way to do it. So we'll type DHCP and we'll click on DHCP server. And it takes us right to the screen where we need to install it. So we'll just click on install now. And it may take it just a bit to go out and do it. Again, this is on a Raspberry Pi. So it's not like you're running this on an i386 9i processor. It's, so it's just going to take a little bit of time. So it's building the packages now. And this should get us up and running here in just a second. Just when you think you're about ready to give up, you should see a screen like this show up and it's going to basically go through everything that's done and it's going to let you know that everything's in place install complete okay so now we can return to dhcp server all right well now that we've got dhcp installed first we need to add a new subnet so we'll just call this base subnet for uh, there's any number of reasons you could do this with so 10.0.1.0 and then subnet mask of 255.255.255.0, which this basically, if you're not used to subnetting, don't worry about it. This is where you specify what are the host addresses. So by doing the triple 255.0, we're saying everything after that dot one is a host address. And there's two you can't use, the dot zero, because that defines the network range in this case, and then 255, which would be considered the broadcast. So address ranges will tell it to use dot 10 and then 10.0.1.254 and we'll just leave the default uh, least time because you can do all sorts of things with that but right now we're just trying to get up and running we can if you're curious about some of this reach out to me and i'm always happy to do a video later date where we go into a little more detail so we'll click on create and then we'll go back into there and we need to edit client options so default router we're gonna 
this is where it sends all its traffic out to the internet. So we'll go 10.0.1.1, which is in my case, what I will go do. You can specify time servers, NTP servers, and it's any number of things you can do. So again, we're gonna go save because we always want to do that. Now we've got to create an, an IP address pool. So we'll add a pool. And even though we gave the information before, we'll sit here and do it again. 10.0.1.10, 10.0.1. If I get my oh, my dots in here, dot o dot one dot two fifty four. Now you can specify a failover pair. So the, and this is where you can get into some rather interesting configurations. So if you want to really have more than one DHCP server, and there's a reason why you couldn't, but there's some things you'll need to think about in terms of failing over to where they'll share information theoretically, depending on how this all gets set up. So this is certainly worth an option. But we're going to say none at this point. We're gonna leave all the stuff the way it is. So we'll click on create. And just to be on the safe side, we'll click save again, because we have made a change. And see, it's already, if you look down here at the bottom, it's already got it up and running. So really, it was pretty straightforward. And there, as with anything, there's a lot you can do in terms of configuration. Okay, now with anything, there's always the testing you want to do to make sure now i've already got an active dhcp server in my network so i unhooked it temporarily and then did a release and renew on my windows 10 workstation doing a reboot might not have gotten it to reacquire an address depending on where it stood in the lease so by doing an ip config forward slash release and then renew and then forward slash renew with ip config then that will get you up and running so if we go to list active leases if everything's working right now you will see that it came out with the dot 191 address and if we list all active and expired well then there's nothing else there if we go subnets and usage okay it's got it thinks 490 obviously i'm going to have to check its math uh that's not where we wanted it to go so this shows you that it is up and running and if we go back to network list so you can do quite a bit with this it's something that it's good to have an idea of how dhcp works so if you need to invoke some special features and your current system doesn't do it then this is certainly one way to get you up and running if you're watching this on YouTube, you will see videos on the screen that are similar to the one you've just watched or other content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.